Hello everyone, it is summer 2020, which means it's time to look at the anime coming out this season over in Japan. Now, as usual for these, I'm looking at only episode one of each of these shows, and I'm skipping anything that's a season two, season three, season four. I figure if you haven't watched any of those, you should probably start with season one. And if you watch season one, you probably know if you're going to watch season two or three or four. So that's the plan there. Also, I'm skipping anything that is clearly aimed at like a kindergarten market. We have always one or two anime coming out that are um, aimed for like a really, really young kids. So I'm not going to cover that stuff. And there are a few things that uh, haven't come out yet um, or that I just missed, didn't get a chance to see. That's, you know, unfortunate. So let us start and talk about some of these things. And um, as usual, I'm going through alphabetically, starting with Chofutsu Toshi Kashiwa Densetsu R, which is, as far as I know, not licensed. Uh, this is a gag anime. And by the end of it, I was more confused than I was at the start. It's only, I think, four minute episodes of very, very random comedy. Unfortunately, some of it seems to be specific to like Japanese culture stuff like pop culture, which I'm just not familiar with. So just be aware of that. Um, definitely weird and random. Um, it's basically just kind of stick figures uh, moving around. Well, anime characters, but just sort of, you know, moving around flat. No much, no real animation to speak of on it. Uh, which is one of those, you know, weird gag anime that we get occasionally. That is uh, definitely a thing. So if you're looking for that, that's what you'll get. Decadence is um, a bit more of a throwback anime, actually. Uh, reminds me more of the action-adventure anime of, say, the 90s. Uh, or even the the, uh, the 80s, uh, set on this one giant, essentially, um, uh, mobile city that people live in, sort of post-apocalyptic. Um, people are running from these monsters, and um, uh, definitely one of these um, anime that is trying to hit that sort of... Um, uh, a bunch of different things at once. So it has some drama, it has some comedy, it has some, some character growth uh, in there. Uh, main character is this young girl who is working with this uh, older guy, um, and clearly, you know, stuff is happening um, in terms of the, the kind of the politics going on and what, what all is happening um, in the city. But there are also some interesting little moments thrown in there which makes you question kind of what is even happening? Like, is this even real? Um, so I'm very curious about that, and some gorgeous animation. Uh, they're just kind of really th throwing some animators at this to, uh, uh, to give some of this action animation um, and sort of kaiju battle type of stuff, really humans against kaiju, really, um, and making that um, uh, really fun and interesting, um, at least visually. So um, that's what you're going to get there. Still unsure what the setting is and where it's going. Um, s still seems very... Um, I ended up feeling uh, somewhat confused about what the setting was, um, obviously understanding the basics, but um, um, still obviously much more to, to learn and, and understand as you go into this, and just, uh, I mean, definitely gorgeous animation in that. Um, speaking of which, God of High School on Crunchyroll, uh, based on a webtoon, Korean webtoon, and um, this clearly seems to me to be basically something that is trying to throw um, a whole bunch of action animators at a silly action premise. Um, if you've ever seen some of the more ridiculous um, like battle anime of like the 80s and 90s, where the premise doesn't really matter, it's just there as an excuse for cool fight sequences. That's really what God of High School uh, comes across as in episode one. Uh, it is a big, fun um, shonen series, but with a lot of action animation in that first episode, just gobs of it. Um, and more importantly, I think I, I saw what appeared to be like different specific animators like working on specific sequences. So it's like this, uh, you know, little fight sequence with this particular character is animated by this person because they're really good at that kind of fight stuff. And this little fight sh shot of this person is animated in this particular way. So they seem to be really trying to um, marry the animator to the character and to kind of the art style. So we'll see if that continues, or that's just an episode one thing. Um, but yeah, over the top, ridiculous, um, but very fun, ridiculous um, shonen action series uh, coming out there. And if that sounds like what you want, that's pretty much what you're getting out of that, as far as we can tell so far. 
Um, moving on to Lapis Relight. This is our idol series of this season. Uh, it's about a whole bunch of uh, cute teenage girls who are all in an academy. It's sort of um, um, Harry Potter girls' school crossed with idol anime. Uh, like, literally, you know, you have letters sent by owls. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear what they're doing there. Um, what I did like is that there's some interesting elements around world building. Like, apparently, it's, it's very much magic stone based. So you see, like, they'll, they'll walk through a door, and you know, the door will lock because there'll be a little, like, um, stone there that will glow to show that the door is, you know, unlocked and opening, things along those lines. So there's some interesting sort of world building stuff there. Um, it is definitely cute teenage girls, you know, interacting. One of the reasons you see all of these characters here is because this does appear to be one of those shows where these are all, like, named characters, named girls in the show. I think we only saw one male in the entire first episode. Um, and he was, like, the person delivering the girl there. Anyway, um, so whatever type of girl you like, you're going to find her here somewhere. Um, so it's, you know, a competing um, idol groups, basically, in this uh, magical academy. Um, so definitely, you know, Love Live, Idol Master, any of those sorts of things, it definitely feels like like that in, in tone and style. Um, and just, uh, you know, pretty and very much, you know, that um, in every, every, every way, shape, and form that I could see. Uh, Misfit of Demon King Academy was one of the surprises of the season for me. Um, it is about this uh, young man who goes to the, this academy that's trying to find the new Demon King. Uh, everyone there is demon, so everyone's evil. Uh, and there's definitely evil stuff going on there. Um, uh, but the twist is that the main character is very, very powerful and um, knows it and works with that. So as opposed to being the typical shonen protagonist who either isn't powerful but has like the one trick um, or is really powerful but doesn't know really how to control that power, the protagonist here absolutely knows how to use his powers um, and, but, and is now kind of revealing himself to the world. So that's an interesting sort of twist on the whole shonen um, uh, concept. Clearly a harem-esque uh, aspect to it there, um, as you can see from the key visual. But um, I found it interesting that you have a story with an extremely competent main character um, and the way he is then navigating the world with that um, supreme power um, and what he's, 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 um, what he's doing with that power. So curious where it, where it goes with that. And the fact that there are some people doing some very, you know, um, um, evil things to each other, right? And like, that's just how this school works. Um, moving on to Monster Girl Doctor, one of the etchy series of the season. Uh, this is about a human who lives in a world of many different monster races um, and is a, a family doctor, essentially, a, a, a standard uh, practicing physician, um, and thus must deal with all sorts of things around uh, um, uh, you know, pregnancy and characters being um, you know, dealing with that stuff and having to do physical examinations and such like that. Um, and he is a fairly typically um, um, generic, you know, protagonist for this sort of thing. Although he does have his desires and his interests. He's not completely bland. Um, but it's definitely more about the colorful characters around him and how they're going to interact. It's hard to tell where this is going to go. Um, the first episode did feel, in, in the sense that the first episode didn't really get a, give us a good sense of whether this is going to be really about his relationship with another character, whether it's just going to be kind of a girl of the week thing, or, you know, these cases come in, um, whether um, it's going to have any sort of plot uh, or not. There certainly so could be some plot developing over the course of the series. Um, so kind of hard to tell where it's going to, where it's going to go. Um, um, definitely a solid animation budget, eh, nothing, nothing major. Um, you know, nothing crazy, but then it is, you know, it, it's not really a major action series or anything. Uh, interestingly, they do um, a lot of sort of switching back and forth between 3D and 2D character models, um, but very, like, um, doing that where it makes sense. So, for example, there's a centaur girl, several centaur uh, characters in this, and, um, you know, drawing a centaur body is really complicated. So for some of the shots where um, there, there's a lot of movement, for example, they may use CG, but then use 2D for a lot of the, the standard sort of um, you know, dialogue scenes, uh, stuff like that. So, I th you know, 
I noticed the CG, but it never felt out of place, if that makes sense. It never felt like, oh, that is clearly a, you know, um, completely uh, gratuitous CG shot because we need to use CG here or whatever. Um, it's more, uh, you know, here's a shot of this character spinning around, so we're going to have to, that's going to be CG. Um, so I think, I think it, was, it was handled decently in, in that series, but definitely an edgy series. You're going you're gonna to get that. Um, not quite as etchy as some of the other series this season, like Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time. Um, this is a series about, is, again, kind of hard to tell where it's going to go, but definitely a very uh, edgy series. The main character is, uh, um, let's just say, um, special, and thus um, many girls in the kingdom thus want, um, let's just say they want his genes, right? <laughs> not in the, the, you know, not in that sense. Um, so, uh, people are constantly coming after him, and apparently, this is about him not necessarily resisting that every time, <laughs> like a lot of other anime protagonists. Um, so, there's definitely, it looks like there's going to be a lot of, uh, of that kind of stuff going on in this, this series. There is a significant amount of nudity in this episode, so just be aware that's where it's going. Um, one of the, the stronger series around that, uh, that, that topic uh, here. Uh, I would say the the most fan service, the most nudity of of the shows this season. So, if that interests you, that's going to be that. Um, Rent a girlfriend. I wasn't sure if it was going to go in that direction. Turns out it didn't. This is a series about compensated dating, which is a real thing in Japan, where people will pay for the um, the time of a girl or sometimes a boy, but typically a girl, to spend time with them, to you know hang out with them, kind of like a girlfriend. Um, the legitimate services um, is just you know, spend time hanging out. You go to you know the movies. You go to do this or do you do that. You know, it's, there's no physical contact. It's just simply you know I'm paying for your time to spend time with me and all that stuff. And um, this is sort of a rom com about a guy who ends up um, uh, having a you know a, a engaging uh, a girl in that and um, then questioning that. And what I liked about this episode is it is very much about this thing that this is a, a part-time job that people take on um, and that, you know, this brings with it certain expectations around, you know, what you're going to know, what you're going to be able to talk about, doing, you know, doing small talk, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so there is, you know, being, you know, you can be good at the job, right? And, um, but then about how you then get into, like, actual, like, emotional feelings, right? Like, hanging out with somebody then brings with it certain um, uh, emotional attachments sometimes. And how do you deal with that when this is really just a business arrangement, fundamentally? Um, so it does deal with that, although in a very rom-com kind of a way. So I was impressed that it deals with a, with a topic with a level of not quite seriousness in the sense that it's a, it's a deep drama, but in the sense that um, um, it isn't just a premise reason for these people to hang out. It is actually something they deal with about um, this actual you know, job that this girl is doing with this guy and then how that interacts with things. So, again, cute girls. Um, uh, although the first episode deals almost entirely with one of them. Um, so hard to see how it's going to really... Um, um, how the other girls will, will come in. But um, cute series. Definitely a rom-com. Uh, and fun in that way. Uh, another very etchy series this season. Yes, we had several of them. It's summer. Everyone's hot, right? You want to get hot. Uh, is Super Heroes, or Super H Heroes, or however you want to pronounce that. Um, this is a series in which um, aliens attack Earth people and um, pull out of them all of their... Um, Let's just say all of the energy that they use to be physically attracted to each other, right? So any, um, you know, attraction between uh, two people, any of that kind of stuff just gets completely withdrawn from these people. And they're completely unable to then have any physical interest in each other. Um, and this is dealt with in some fun ways. Um, the first episode does have some troubling elements to it. Uh, which creeped me out and the fo other folks watching it, um, where it's just like, ooh, mm, don't know how comfortable I am with all this. Um, so just be aware of that. You know, it, it may kind of be one of those things like, nope, I don't like where that's going, um, or where that, where that, where that actually, what, what that actually implies. Um, but fundamentally, while this does deal with 
the topic of you know, physical attraction, shall we say. And there is some nudity. Um, it is very playful. It is definitely very goofy. Um, if you've seen Shimoneta, it is very much in that tone, where it is definitely dealing with an adult topic, but in a very fun-loving, very loose way. Um, so that's definitely the tone I got from this um, so far. Decent animation budget, um, nice differentiation of characters. Um, also plays around a little bit with kind of the um, the Ultraman Power Rangers sort of a fantasy. Uh, the, the aliens are you know, very much feel like Power Rangers villains. Um, so definitely more of a, a light, fun show to to follow for your you know um, uh, your hot summer days. Um, speaking of light, Uzaki Chan wants to hang out is a Comedy in the vein of uh, one person annoys the heck out of the other person, but for some reason they still hang out together. And this can get a little weird and creepy, right? It can get kind of, um, it, can, it can feel almost like abusive on one side or the other if one person is like constantly denigrating the other person, but for some reason they still hang out. And Uzaki-chan kind of rides the line of that, where um, um, Uzaki is... Okay, they do a good job of establishing the fact that Uzaki, the girl, um, likes the, the main character and wants to hang out with him. And the way she does that is because he is naturally very shy and quiet and uh, introspective, is that she kind of goes up to him and has to ask him a lot if he wants to do things. And that's kind of push him to, to do things. And so the thing is, he ultimately ends up enjoying that. And it's not like she is you know, dragging him places. It's that he needs a little bit more, you know, um, a little more, more tension, a, a little bit more in the ways of, you know, prompting to actually go and do something. Um, and she, she's kind of playing off of that. Um, ultimately, at the end of the episode, um, I could kind of see where these characters were um, appreciating each other. And I could understand that relationship. It, it didn't feel as weird as some of these relationships can be. Um, so that, that kind of worked for me, um, FYI. But that is um, it's a show that will definitely depend on how much you can, how much you will appreciate those sorts of relationships where one person is definitely um, poking the other a lot. Um, not, mm, mm, but where um, it's definitely kind of an unequal relationship in that way. Um, I did find it kind of charming. Um, that is it. There are only 10 anime that I managed to catch this season because that's how short this season is because, you know, COVID-19. Um, again, there are a few others coming out that I just haven't haven't aired yet, and so I haven't had a chance to uh, to catch. And I think one or two that is out there that I just wasn't able to 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 find. Uh, but those are the anime I found this season. I hope you found that useful. And um, uh, again, thank you for watching.